The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. They may be drinkers, Robin, but they're also human beings. Hell yeah, let's get Stinko. This is the Giles and the Goalie Podcast as part of the Zone Coverage Podcast Network. With your hosts, Giles Farrell and Ben Remington. Welcome to the Giles Goalie Podcast. I am your host, Giles Farrell, joined as always by Ben Remington. Hello. Uh, we are back. We are still here. Not sure why. Uh, they, yeah. keep, they keep letting us come on, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, ben, have uh, you caught any other uh, playoff games in the last week? Ooh, not. I mean, I've seen bits and pieces of a few of them, but I can't say that I've watched like enough of a game to say that I watched the whole game yet. Um, I yeah, my life is uh, in well, it's not in shambles, but it's just very busy right now. So right. Uh, yeah, chaotic was um, the word I was gonna go with. Yeah, yeah, chaotic is good. That's a good one. Um, it's gonna be less chaotic now. We're we're through the inspections and all that jazz. So. Hopefully, uh, we, we experience a little bit of the calm before the storm here for the next couple of weeks, and I can watch some playoff hockey as the uh, first-round series get into the uh, good games, uh, as it were. Um, so, yeah, I have not seen much. Um, I've been following along, obviously, on, on the Twitters, mm-hmm. and like I said, I've seen bits and pieces, and I've watched some recap shows and whatnot, but that's about it. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been watching uh, pretty regularly – um yeah likable likable teams really took a hit today uh ooh, yikes uh, yeah i saw the yotes loss that's too uh, bad they got they got drilled twice in, yeah in two games and yeah and it just in the kachina jerseys just just brutal uh yeah. then we had uh columbus they lost earlier to uh tampa bay mm-hmm. but Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, this is going to be uh, probably a shorter than usual show because we don't really have a whole lot to uh, to talk about as there was really no hot button issues uh, for the Wild uh, in the last week as they've uh, all pretty much gone away. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the uh, the talking point I did want to bring up is uh, we had uh, an article run today on. 10k ranks uh joe wrote the article about uh bill garen mentioning uh, changing the culture uh with the minnesota wild Mm -hmm. um and you know i feel like maybe this is something we maybe heard before but do you uh, do you buy into him changing the culture or is that just more gm speak to you um you know it's probably a little bit of both uh, like I, I don't know. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people eager to jump all over. Uh, insert veteran's name here. Um, when when Garen talks about culture that needs to be changed. Um, but you know, I, I think anytime you have a team like this that has, I, I can't even say this team is underperformed because I feel like they've performed to the level of the talent they have. So. I don't know, is a culture change really like when you need a culture change, that's usually for organizations that are underperforming relative to talent. Um, so on that aspect of it, I don't necessarily buy it. On on the other side of it, uh, culture is a wildly important thing. Um, you know, looking at, at the workplaces that I've been in and the different cultures that I've been in, it's uh it's very important and, and it can transform, uh, you know, a mediocre <laughs> team or, or, or a lackluster workplace into something that excels. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of six in one hand, half a dozen in the other for me. I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, 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 it's, it's very in between for me. I don't know if I buy it, but I think that culture is a very important thing 
in, in any, in any kind of uh, professional setting. I, I, I'm still a little bit hesitant to say that he will be able to do that, but I feel like there's maybe more of a chance uh, because Garen is an ex player. So he might know a little bit more about, uh, what needs to be changed within the culture as opposed to your, you know, regular general manager who has rarely played. So yeah. I, I, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but it, it's a lot easier said than done to just come in and change the culture, change players. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, Culture changes are very hard to bring about in the, the NHL. You know, look look at just, for example, just the culture of losing and how hard that is to break. I mean, look at hmm? Buffalo and how long have they been <laughs> stuck in the mud and they just can't get over themselves. Hmm. And, you know, Edmonton, you know, they had only made the playoffs once in the McDavid era. And that doesn't technically count this year because they were only in the play in series because they lost. So and yeah. losing cultures are hard to break. And then there's just other kind of toxic cultures that are hard to break too. that, you know, I'm not saying that's what is here. I'm just saying it, if that's, that could be, but cultures are bad. Cultures are very hard to break and, so I'm still a little pessimistic about that happening, but there's maybe a little more hope than usual. Uh, there's seemingly change for the good coming with the wild roster on the off season. Uh, we got, you know, Kirill Kaprizov is in the twin cities, uh, hey. which is, which is good. Uh, that leads to some, <clears throat> you know, heightened expectations. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the kind of change that comes about with the absence of Miko Koivu and then uh, the, you know, whatever roster changes come with that. You know, it, it will be interesting to see what those are, but, you know, those in itself could bring about a, a big change in culture. So it'll, it'll be interesting to watch, and it's just an interesting uh, think point this week to, uh, to go on about. Uh, while we sit here and twiddle our thumbs and wait for the next scrap of news <laughs> to come about. Yeah. It might, and maybe it's just that, you know, he wants to take the culture from good to great. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're doing a lot of reading into this whole culture comment because we don't have much to go off of. Right. But it, it doesn't strike me that the wild have a bad culture because I mean, that's the reason why Paul Fenton was fired was because he created a bad culture and Craig Leopold wouldn't tolerate it, like to the point where he fired the dude in the middle of summer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then you look at the captaincy recently, and, and I'm sure Miko haters jumped all over this, but um, you know, Miko Koivu, he was a slow player, but I don't think that he was a particularly lazy player. Um, and, and then you look at guys who are still with the team, like Ryan Suter, you know, who would play 45 minutes a night if you let him. And, and Zach Parisi, I mean, who, who the hell works harder on the ice than Zach Parisi? And, and so I, I don't think that they had a bad culture, um, but maybe it's just that they, you know, have a culture, maybe a, a workmanship culture, and, and, and Garen wants to take it to the next level, and that's maybe what he meant. Um, but, but it's really hard. It's, it's really a whole, lot of, uh, <laughs> a whole lot of conjecture at this point because nobody, is, nobody really knows. Right. Right. Yeah, that'll uh that'll be kind of one of the underlying uh things to watch over the the off season whenever that is. It's, it's still all up in the air dependent on uh, yeah. when the NHL playoffs do end. Uh I I did look at the dates uh, cuz I was curious about this myself and the last and I don't think the dates the dates haven't changed. And if you look at the the calendar, it kind of maps out as such. With every every round of the playoffs taking roughly two weeks, um, the last day for a Stanley Cup game is October second, and so that's that's tentatively the plan. I I really am kind of doubting that we'll see that push back any further because it's not like they're having any COVID problems in the bubble right now. 
right. but that could change. Um, I just, I just kind of doubt it because they're in Canada. Um, and uh, so that puts the draft at October 6th and free agency starting at October 9th. Um, so those are the dates. I, you look though, you can find them anywhere, but I, I was curious about that myself. So that's, that's the dates we're looking at. And I, I kind of think that that's gonna, that's gonna hold true. Mm. Interesting. Right. And the right in October. Wow. Mm-hmm. What a, what a time to be alive. Um, yeah. And then they were starting training camp mid November and, and I heard Zach Preezy on the radio yesterday. And he said, that's what they were told was that uh, they'd be reporting for camp you know, November 15th. 15th i think that nhl is 17th for a day but whatever um so and he also said which i thought was kind of interesting he said that you know he had heard and i don't know how reliable it is but zach Preezy said that he had heard the owners you know it kind of kicked around the idea of maybe permanently pushing back the start of the nhl season to uh november um so every year would start november just because you think about right now they start in early october and they're competing with mlb playoffs every single year so um might not be something that's out of the realm of possibility yeah, no, for sure. I've kind of assumed that we're never going to go back to the way the NHL the schedule was before. <laughs> Probably uh, not. But uh, we'll see. I the NHL hates uh, change, so we will. Uh, True. We'll see what happens. Um, oh, what else was I going to bring up? Hmm. <laughs> I completely forgot. <laughs> I saw you and Tony wrote uh, dueling pieces on buyouts this week. Um, yeah. Did, uh, did you have any resounding thoughts? I know we talked about that last week, but um, what are your kind of final thoughts on, on the buyout talk? You know, I'm uh, – you just look at the wild cap space for next year. I do side a little bit more with uh, – Tony uh, not uh, buying out and that's kind of been my staple on this uh, show before uh, is don't buy out Uh, so uh, don't you love when you have to write an article like contrary to your own opinion right Uh, just I mean it's good to have those arguments out there but it's kind of funny when you're writing it and you're like sort of trying to convince yourself right yeah and I mean (laughs) and and the purpose of my uh, article wasn't more I was in favor of buyouts it was just more like okay here's why these players could get a buyout and right right whatever um yep but yeah I I always kind of side with no buyouts I I think it's good to just ride out the last year of Devin Dubnik's contract uh let another year of Victor Rask come off the books so you don't have to pay him for a long time and um, and, uh, who's he? Oh yeah, Greg Pattern. I'm not even sure that guy's gonna get uh, get a buy or be eligible for a buyout because he's hurt. So I, right. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, whew, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, I did want to. I remember where I was going now. I did want to come back to the mailbag question we had last week. Uh, somebody asked about uh, who should the wild draft at number nine. And I've mm. started digging in a little bit to uh, some draft research uh, and whatnot. Uh, so I, I am wholeheartedly convinced uh, this time around the wild have to go uh, for very, you know, a need on the depth chart usually you just pick best player available blah 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 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I feel like they have to go with a forward at the very minimum in this with this number nine pick mm-hmm. and I've been really putting my eye on centers who could be around at number nine um, mm-hmm. I know some people have uh, brought up the the goaltender uh Eskarov, I, I am uh, against that. Uh, you'll see that next week on Zone Coverage. <laughs> Why? Uh, that's in the can. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at. I know uh, some people ask me about uh, Lundell, the Finnish center. Um, yeah, he's he seems to be a very 
or projects to be a polished uh, two-way forward or two-way center. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's I, 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 as good as that sounds, I, I was, went looking for somebody a little more uh, offensively minded uh, from that position. Uh, and so I just uh, sticks out to me as the name Cole Perfetti. I hope I'm saying that right. Who's uh, not as uh, big in terms of body size, but he is a very gifted uh, offensively. Uh, one of the best skaters in the draft uh, dynamic playmaker. So I, uh, I would like to see him taken, um, but that, you know, we can debate that. Uh, for you know a, a later date as we get closer to the draft but that's that's kind of where I am at right now and as I you know dive deeper into this you know I could change on that but we will see so I, I did want to come back to that yeah I, I'd seen a couple of things thrown out there uh, you know obviously we're getting closer to the draft um, well I mean as close as we can be in in uh, in late August but um I did see the goalie thing come up in a mock draft and that, that was interesting to me because um, a lot of uh, the prospect scouts and, and those type of folks aren't very high on Capo Kakinen's future, um, which I understand. And, and cause certainly we haven't ever been that high on him. Nobody uh, even locally is claiming him to be the future, the guaranteed future of wild goaltending. Cause he, he wasn't all that much of a Ballyhood prospect himself. Um, but, but it's interesting because, like, why not? You know, we see goalies come out of nowhere all the time. Mm -hmm. And you haven't really given this kid a fair shot at the NHL yet. He's, he played, what, like five games last year? Um, so, I don't know. It just, it, and, and to your point, the organizational need at center is just, I mean, to say it is glaring is, is a wild understatement at this point. So, um, I, I agree with you. Even though they are picking high and there's going to be some very talented players there, this is allegedly a, a very good draft. Um, I, I, I really would like to see them take a, a true center as well. And for the love of God, if they take a Scandinavian two-way center again, um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself, but uh, it's, it's not going to be pretty. Boy, yeah, that uh, we'll save that for later, but yeah. <laughs> I, swear, I I did want to come back to that just so I uh, I didn't full on cut sure. out of that, but sure, um, sure, yep. yeah, we can uh, we can switch back into uh, some NHL uh, playoff discussion. Uh, we're closing in here on the end of the first round. Uh, we've had some series close out already. Um, our Golden Knights uh, became the first team yesterday to end their series with the. Uh, five-game elimination of the Chicago Blackhawks. Mm -hmm. uh, who, besides the Golden Knights, who do you have your eye on um, in the playoffs moving forward? Ooh, um, you know, I I think Boston has looked pretty good. Um, you know, it was it was a little bit disappointing that uh, those lovable jerks from Carolina didn't didn't make a little bit more of a of a ruckus in these playoffs. Um, so, you know, Boston has looked pretty good. Uh, I, there's, I mean, every team that's, that's moved on has been, you know, I, I guess the, the Calgary Dallas series is pretty close. Blues and, and Canucks are obviously close. Every other series has really kind of been a, uh, <laughs> a pretty, pretty emphatic wipeout. So um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, Carter Hart is, is playing extremely well for the Flyers. Be interesting to see if he is stays hot enough to to carry them around. Um, the Lightning are always good. You can never count them out just because of the amount of talent they have. Um, but I mean, you gotta love what you see out of our Golden Knights. They they are just mm -hmm. uh, you know not that Chicago was <laughs> was well, I mean you know great story for them upsetting the Oilers and all that. But like uh, you know that that's exactly how that series should have gone. Um, you know and, and, and surprise it even lasted more than four games really. Um, well, I mean, Corey Crawford was the reason why, but uh, yeah, it uh, Knights look great, and and you, and you gotta love that. Um, as, as much as you probably won't want to hear it, the Avalanche uh, look really good. Um, I, I know uh, it, it it pained both of us deeply that the Kachina jerseys 
will no longer be featured in the NHL playoffs. But, um, I mean, that Western Conference final between the Avs and the Knights is going to be absolute fire. I mean, it's, it is going to be, you know, if, if it comes to that, which let's hope it does, but um, that is going to be one hell of a, a Western Conference final. And, and uh, you know, as usual, those conference finals are usually better than the Stanley Cup finals, so. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, even before the, the pause, I was uh, big on the Flyers, and they've seemingly picked right up where they left off, uh, about to seemingly polish off the Canadians here uh, yep. this evening. Um so they've been uh, they've been fun. I, I did enjoy uh, watching Columbus uh, during this this postseason. They're they're done, but hey, they're just that they're just that team that they're basically the example of. Here's a team that doesn't have you know a premier stars, but man, do they bust their tails every single game and they just do the right things and they. Uh, I was disappointed they couldn't extend their series uh, another game or two, but uh, they were not uh, not disappointing to watch uh, nightly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I am disappointed in Washington. Uh, they yeah. they've been uh, just kind of a tire fire. Uh, they're down three to one to the Islanders. I didn't give the Islanders much of a shot in uh, this series, but as I'm learning i'm i'm really down on the washington coaching staff now after watching Mm. two years of no barry trots i am more appreciating uh just how good barry trots is behind the bench Uh, (laughs) and oh the irony barry trots is on the opposite bench (laughs) right right Uh, uh, but yeah i i feel like the the game seven we're going to get out of this this lot is uh, Vancouver and St. Louis, and that's yeah. probably the one I've least paid attention to. Or no, I'm sorry, Dallas, Calgary, St. Louis, Vancouver. Oh. I feel like that's not going to go to seven. Yeah, apparently Jake Allen is good again. Um, I, I just, I'm so, I'm so tired of Jake Allen. He's back, baby. I it's just like, you know, he is so garbage. And then he just comes out of nowhere to just absolutely annihilate teams, to single-handedly eliminate teams in the playoffs. And it's like, what the hell? That's his, that's his calling card. He's just, I know. He's just Captain Clutch. <laughs> he's, he's like a, a mediocre backup goalie that you just keep around because he's apparently guaranteed to get hot in the playoffs. Yeah, you should just always have him on your roster for when you make yeah. the playoffs and then put him in. He's like – he's comparable he's to it. Ian Poulter in the Ryder Cup. Oh, God. That's right? such a good comparable. It is because oh. it's like any other time, the whole regular season is like, okay, whatever. Like, yeah, he's all right, but who cares? Yeah. And then when it matters, it's like, oh, my God, I hate how good that guy is in this moment. Oof. Oof. Yeah. That's uh, that's something. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm curious to see how this all uh, this all plays out. It's probably going to all be a much clearer picture by Thursday evening uh, yeah. as to what we're going to get in uh, in round two, and uh, we, we might get some uh, some pretty good uh, matchups in round two even. So mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot to uh, to look forward to. Um, but yeah, the the Golden Knights, uh, they should still be your pick because are they good or what? Yeah, that uh, oof. It, it's hard because you don't want to get too excited for that uh, final against the Avs already, but uh, kind of starting to get excited. I'm trying to remember what I'm mean, looking up what I picked in the bracket challenge. I did have a Avs Knights uh, conference final. Mm-hmm. Where I had the Knights uh, victorious, no of surprise. Uh, yeah. But uh, my bracket not looking too terrible. Uh, I did mm-hmm. pick Carolina, mm. uh, which junk. I did pick Washington, which is uh, almost junk. Yep. Uh, but I had Vegas, Calgary, Colorado, St. Louis uh, as the uh, winners in the second round or in the, mm. the out of the first round. So. We'll see, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. I don't know. Anything, anything else we want to talk about? Uh, no, I don't, uh, I don't think that that's, uh, anything that's really left. I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to catch some more of the playoffs. Uh, now that, uh, my life is hopefully in a lull for at least a couple weeks here, um, <laughs> until I have to move and then it's going to be chaos again. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to catching the, the tail end of, of these series, at least the two series out West that are pretty good. Um, so that'll be fun. But uh, that's about it. I'm interested to see if anything else comes out about the Wild. Uh, I know obviously they can't make any roster moves right now, but um, interested to see if, if uh, you know, perhaps they're openly shopping anybody or if anything comes out, uh, you know, a little more specific on that whole culture bit. Um, well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we, can, we can call it a show. Sure. Not even sure why we showed up today, but we did anyway. So you know, it's because uh, we're professionals, Giles. Oh yeah, we're just the the most standard uh, in podcast professionalism. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, that'll do it for us. Uh, this probably is going to be our shortest show on record, uh, just because we did not. Do we make a half an hour? uh more close if i oh, okay. if i ad-libbed for another two minutes we might get there well we got intro right so that helps right yeah the yeah. uh the intro and the out out music uh it, it it might get us there we'll see okay I, I think we've done one around a half an hour before yeah it sounds right but that yeah that is kind of the low water mark so you know this would have been a good show for Tom to just come on and just grind our gears because that could have filled another half hour. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we do have several weeks left of playoffs with likely right. not much wild news. So um, I don't, I certainly never want to open the door for Tom to join the show. Um, but, <laughs> but we might have to. Well, I just opened the door. So watch out. <laughs> sure uh yeah uh yeah uh we're gonna call it a show we'll be back next week sometime uh day to be determined uh sure. follow ben and i on twitter at ben Rebington at giles furrow uh, podcast twitter is at g-a-t-g wild podcast uh find this otherwise fine production on itunes soundcloud iHeartRadio, spotify Google Play. Uh, if you are an iTunes listener, please uh, do leave us a uh, rating on iTunes. Uh, and you can also find all of these podcasts at 10krinks.com. Uh, so that is, uh, that is where you can find all of them as well. Uh, and we will be back again to chat with you next week. Later. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Gill and the Goaltender podcast. That's not resiliency. You're making it sound like we're good. That's all. I'm done. <laughs>